Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. Today we're continuing with, now that's what I call games, on the CD32. For those of you that are new to my channel, this is episode 5 of a series I started in 2019. There's 100 games on this disc and each video is going to have 10 games. But anyway, this is episode 5, let's go. Okay, we've been joined with 100 game playthrough, this is episode 5 of 10. Next on the list is Leading. A PD version of Lemmings, a mouse game. Well, everyone likes Lemmings, apart from people that don't. Okay, instructions. Let's take a screenshot of that, because I might need it. Right. You know I was a drummer, didn't you? I'm not. Okay, this is Leading. Copyright 1992 by Charles Chapman. Okay, this is Leading. The idea of leading is to get the quad on the balls home using the various forms of construction available to you. Move around using the mouse and moving the screen along, and pressing the left mouse button to place the object, while the right mouse button will reverse the object. For example, a down left slope will turn into a down right slope, and so on. To move on to the next object, press the space bar. Now it's similar to Lemmings in its way. We'll get the balls from here to here, and we do this by using these blocks. What makes it very, very difficult is the blocks are given to you in a certain order, and it's different every single time you play it. Now, if it's a block you don't require, you can discard it. But every time you discard it, that will cost you a block. If you run out, you're going to have to press the escape key. Because you're going to run out of pieces and you'll be able to get them home. Now, I'm going to talk about each one individually when we get there. Probably on the next level, but it make more sense. Let's get past this first section. We'll get three home, but the maximum number of balls you can have on the screen at once is two. Right. Now, to get rid of an item you don't want, you can either press it randomly on the, on the screen, or press the space bar. Which I think is probably the easiest way. Right, I need a lifter. All I need is a lifter, and that will be enough to get it done. Which you're going to place there. Now, it's very, very challenging. I've got a lot to talk about, but it's going to take some time. Now, the levels can be a little bit time-consuming, and a little bit of trial and error as well. But we need the balls to go at the right places at the right time when we want them to. But at the moment, it's, it's causing a little bit of an issue, but they will hopefully get there. Now if you want, if you've got some spare pieces, you can help them right away by hopefully blocking them in. Speed it up. There's one home. There we go. Two home. Fantastic. Right. Now we need this one to do its thing. Now again, I'm going to speed it up by blocking it in its tracks. I hope you speed it along. Now, on the keyboard, you can actually use the left and right keys to move the screen along quickly, and use the space bar to move on to another block, and the escape key abandons the level. All we've got to do now is wait for this ball to do its thing, and hopefully it'll go to the exit, but luckily there's no time limit here. Now, when the screen starts to flash, that is telling you you're actually running low on blocks. At the moment, I've got zero, so I can't place any more blocks, because I don't have any more. It's time, isn't it? My lord. Oh, it's there! My lord! Ah. That took about five minutes. I'm not joking. My lord. It got there. <laughs> there we go. As simple as that. <laughs> Fantastic. All home. Okay, level two. Get up. Code is booty. My lord. Okay, level two. We have blocks. 37 of them. We'll get from there to there. A lot to do. Right, this is a lifter. Try to lift the balls up. Now it takes some time, it does get there. Now we place that here. When you hit a click, that means it hasn't been put down. So a few attempts, it will get there. We have 37 blocks. Right, now these are slopes. Self explanatory works the slope, but they can be mutated left or right. I'm going to start putting them here to make it a safe journey. This is an up block. If a ball is pushed upwards into this, it will rise until it reaches air. You can push up into this any solid object for the same effect. Now we've got to create a very, very big tower. This is a left and right pusher. Try to push the balls in the direction of movement. They can be rotated left or right. Make sure you have it going in the right direction, otherwise you give yourself a lot of pain. 
Right, this is a bridge. Again, service factory works as a normal bridge. Place it there. Okay. Now I'm going to place this and there so they don't fall off the edge. Now use these slopes to make it a safe journey. Right. Now this is actually an invisible block. It isn't actually invisible, but it gets rid of any static object it is placed over. In this case, this tree is causing a bit of an issue. Place it on the tree to eliminate the tree. Right, there is our lifter. Can I place it there? Right, keep creating towers. Right, we're done with those. We don't need those anymore. Right, we do need to get rid of this wall. Okay. Now I'm hoping I'm going to get another one of those to make it accessible. And there we go. Get rid of that one. And if we can, get rid of that bush. Right, more blocks. We don't want to be running out of blocks anytime soon. Okay. Right. The tower is complete. All we've got to do now is get rid of this bush. Place that there. And place that there. That should do it. That should do it. There's one. We've got, got to get three of them there. There's two. Where's the other one? Wait for the lifter. There you go. We got there in the end. There you go. Goes up. Superb. There we go. Fantastic. All home. Fantastic. Level three, up or down. Code is Spain. Okay, this is level three. I'm going to make this the last bit of footage, but this looks horrible. It really, really does. We've got 51 blocks. Now, I'm going to edit this one down because this might be quite time consuming. But let's see how we do. an up block or a lifter. And that should do it. I don't know why. There we go. That should work. Wasn't as bad as I thought. Bingo! Have some of that. Brilliant. However, it is quite... Yeah, the amount of blocks it gives you is quite tight. So you've got to use these lifters to try and save yourself a few. But there we go. Brilliant. One more to go. Bingo! All home! I've never done that one before. Level four, easy, huh? Code is music. Oh my lord. 29 blocks. Oh my goodness, mate. Bush, bush, bush. Bush, bush, bush. Lots of bushes. Now this one doesn't look all that bad if you think about it. My first thought was going down the bottom and eliminating all these bushes. But if you think about it, that's not the way to go. I think the way to go is through the middle. So we get rid of that block there. We're also going to make the exit safe by placing that there. Get rid of the tree. And we need a slope. And we just need invisible blocks. Place one there. Um one there and that should do it that's not actually too bad at all all we gotta do now is get these balls moving so place that there boom boom pow have some of that that's probably easier than the first one see what 17 blocks remaining there we go balls to go one there we go superb but there we go that is leading Level 5, help, I'm trapped. Code is James. Yes, that should do it, baby. Boom, I've done another one. <laughs> I can't believe it. Right, there we go. It's going to take a while, but let's you know, there to there. Yeah. I don't even know how many levels there are. 
So, again, the lifters make it very, very time consuming. But they do get there eventually. Two to go. Give it a little bit of helping hand, shall we? There we go! Come on, you can do it. There you go! That really is it now, people. That is leading! <laughs> oh, look at that! Well done, you've completed this five-level demo version of Leadings by Charles Chapman. Copyright 1992. I've completed it. Fantastic. There we go, people. Next on the list, we have Lothian, a role-play game where you must rescue the king, mouse and keyboard. Legend of Lothian. This is an adventure game in the vein of the Ultimate Game series by Lord British. It was originally featured in the September 1991 issue of the Jump Disc and Media Disc magazine. In this game, you play the role as a humble shepherd who is summoned to a perilous task. Legend of Lothian. Copyright 1991. Welcome to David Meany's Legend of Lothian. Please enter your name. Oh, it doesn't fit. Jamie, your title of your channel is too long. Legend of Lothian, please enter your name. There you go. Are you male or female? I am definitely male. Have you heard of the King Lothian? Yes. Awesome guy. Your quest begins. Okay, this is not the sort of game I was expecting, but we'll give it a whirl. At the moment, we have 10 gold and 300 food. No armour, no weapons. Right, so it's one of these games, you go east, west, north or south, whatever the case may be. We'll go east. So we are a tiny little dude, which doesn't have any weapons, it seems. Maybe we can punch and kick, I have no idea. Maybe. So... Right, do you wish to attack? We've been attacked by an orc. Attack or flee? We'll attack. You need a weapon to attack, and all attacks and hits for one point of damage. Do you wish to attack or flee? Well, we can't attack, we must have flee. Go. Right, we've essentially survived that battle. So we go on, shall we? There's not a lot else we can do. So, we need to find a weapon. So, the question is, where do we find a weapon? Right, we've been attacked again. Unfortunately, we can't attack, we don't have anything to attack with. So again, we have to flee. Right, okay, so we progress. We get attacked again. I must flee. My lord. Flee again. More fleas here than it is on the back of a cat's neck. Go away. You have escaped. Right, okay. There's so many orcs here. My lord, okay. Uh, flee again. You have successfully escaped the battle. I'm taking damage, but I can't be blamed for this. I don't have a weapon. Flee. There's more orcs here in the game of Hero Quest. What's going on? Right, okay. There's trees. Your progress is haunted by trees. There's a lot of trees. And there's a lot of orcs too. Right, so where do we find a weapon? Is there any weapons anywhere in this place? I'm dead. What killed me? You have died. The deadly gases of the marsh has killed you. That's not good, is it? Okay, load? There's no point. I've got nothing to load. Restart? We'll restart. Okay, so we've got to find a weapon. And we've got to find one now. Because we can't go on like this. Because I'm either going to get killed by the marsh, or get killed by multiple orcs. Every time I flee, I get hit. If I attack with no weapon, I get hit. So the odds are not looking very good for me now, is it? Go away. Go away. I've got to get a weapon first. Go away. Uh, you have to escape the battle. Can we go in here? Open? Not here. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, we're somewhere else. Hello, everybody. There's a person. Welcome, my friend. My bar is open to please. Can I get you zero, nothing, or one, a mug of ale for eight gold, or two, a bottle of wine for twelve gold? Well, unfortunately, I cannot afford a bottle of wine, but I can afford a mug of ale. That is a very, very expensive mug of ale. Should we buy one? Why not? Uh, one. Here you go. Enjoy your drink. Thank you very much. Right, I've got two goals, but Jamie, you still don't have a weapon. Nice chatting with you. Come see me again when you wish to purchase some food. Goodbye. 
Well, I need, I need, I don't need food, I don't need alcohol, I do, right, I need a weapon. Surely, somewhere in this place, there sells weaponry or weapons, fantastic. Okay, let's talk to this person. The problem I've got at the moment is, I spent eight gold coins of the ten I had in my possession on some ale. Which is expensive and it hasn't done anything. Apart from make me a little bit tipsy. And if I hadn't spent that, I could have bought myself a club. So what I might do is, I might restart from the beginning, get him again, don't buy alcohol, buy a club. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm here again. Unfortunately my health is not particularly bad, I got attacked by a sea serpent. But, we are here with maximum money. Now, before I keep walking, my character will keep eating, and my health will replenish. So, we have ten gold pieces. So, I'm going to buy myself a club. Right. Hello, everybody. It's me. Right. We talk to her again. Right. I'm going to buy a club, because it's the only thing I can buy. So, we, we buy it. Yes, congratulations. You picked a fine weapon. I know you will be happy with it. Farewell. Well, I don't have a choice. So that or nothing. I can't attack with my bare hands either. So, we can't afford any armour. But never mind. A club is good. We'll go with a club. Do not underestimate the power of a guy that has absolutely no facial features whatsoever. But is armed with a club. Right. Do you wish to attack or flee? Well, I'm going to attack. You attack an orc and hit for four points of damage, killing it. One orc attack and it hits for one point of damage. Do you wish to attack or flee? Attack. You attack one orc and miss. An orc attacks and hits for one point of damage. Do you wish to attack? I'm going to attack again. You killed an orc and hit... Right, so we get points for damaging. And we also get coins. Okay, got six for that. So if we keep attacking, and keep winning, and keep killing, I can earn money and buy myself some armour, or maybe even a better weapon. Got three gold coins for that. Okay, we can buy cloth. <laughs> I'm going to buy some cloth. Alright, okay. There we go, I'm armour dangerous with a club and some cloth armour. Right, now, now times are tough. Now we're getting attacked by two orcs and a giant insect. Right, okay. Attack. The orc attacks and hits one point of damage. The giant insect attacks and hits two points of damage. How big is this insect? Oh my lord, look at this. The giant insect. Do you wish to attack? Right, this is, this is hurting a lot. The giant insect attacks and hits you two points. Flee. You escaped from the flying gigantic insect. He's back again. Flee! Oh, I'm killed! I just got killed by a... I've just been killed by a giant insect. You have died. You have been slain in the fierce battle. Next game on the list is Maesia. Hopefully that is pronounced correctly. Your job is to protect Toyland. It's a joystick game. Okay, the start of the game. This is the Realm of Maesia. One of these shooting mark construction kit games. Now, the Shooting Mark Construction Kit, aka the Shoot, is a game creation system for the Commodore 64, Amiga, and Atari ST, created by Sensible Software and published by Outlaw, part of Palace Software in 1987. It allows the user to create simple shooting marks by drawing sprites and backgrounds and editing attack patterns. The advertising promoted the kit with a phrase by the programmers of Whizball and Parallax. Now, I've played a lot of these in this series, but this is probably the slowest one yet. Your character moves very, very slowly, but worse than that is the rate of fire. It's very, very slow indeed. In fact, you can only shoot one bullet at a time. Now, if your bullet hits its target, then you can fire again. If it goes off the screen, then you can fire again. But trouble is, these enemies take four hits to kill. And if you're shooting them from a distance, it can take a lifetime to kill them. Now, shooting them up close will definitely speed it up, because you're hitting your target faster and allow them to shoot again in a faster time because you're shooting it faster which would be expected going up close but there's always a risk of getting hit by a spiky ball projectile and when there's a lot on the screen it can turn into a bullet hell very very quickly now I don't know what we are some kind of bird possibly shooting pies that you don't hear every day but this is challenging 
Now, this is probably one of the slowest ones so far, but all very similar in their ways, because none of them give you additional bullets or guns, and none of them tell you how many lives you have. Now, the only thing you know is your score. Now, some of these games, you do earn additional lives through score. But again, you don't know, it doesn't tell you. Now, not all enemies die with four hits. These bunny rabbits die with one single shot. And they don't fire at you. So that was a bonus. But when you kill them, they turn into a Skellington. Now, I died there. I died in a place I really shouldn't have died. So I should have just kept on the left or right side of the screen. Now, watch out for these pillars. You don't want to hit a pillar. Now, even though we are flying through the sky, anything on the ground will kill you, including a fish in the sea. So even though we're flying through the sky, you can actually be killed by a fish. Now, these bullets can get seriously out of hand very, very quickly. And it's difficult because their bullets are quite slow as well. Now, they make an unusual sound. Sounds like they're farting. You'll be killed by an enemy that makes a farting sound and shoots spiky ball projectiles. Now, those ones die even more hits. But there we go. We've got bonuses for killing those, which is a plant. Right, new enemy. It's a dragonfly, some kind. A bit like the ones in Galaga. Now these die with two hits. But watch out for their attack patterns. Right, more of these. Four hits. Four hits to kill those, one hit to kill me. But they fire four times, so they definitely get the upper hand. Which is not a difficult task, because I have the worst rate of fire ever. So you can't kill all that. It's just crazy. So the best way is to stick to the left or right side of the screen and pray. But this is some serious firepower they have. But I am so slow. Really slow. Now not all of these games are bad. Some of them have been quite good and some of them I have finished. But this is definitely the slowest one yet. I believe anyway. Right, so we're going to a different area. We have 16,200 points. How many lives do I have? I have absolutely no idea. Right, new enemies. It looks like oil. This oil will shoot at you. And we also have aliens. Now what makes this very tricky is their bullets once again, because sometimes they'll disappear off the screen and then appear again. But again, they take a lot of hits. And they can also hit those cactuses. And look how many hits they take. But up close, it should speed it up. Right. Interesting sounds. Now, I do own a box version of the Shooter Mark Construction Kit. But I've not played it yet. Never attempted it yet. One day I shall. Be interested to see what I can actually come up with if I give it a try. Right, 20,400 points. Now, the kit presents users with a series of menus for customising every aspect of the game. The level graphics are created with a background editor, using a series of blocks for plotting into the game maps. All moving elements are created with a sprite editor. Sprites are assigned to objects. For example, enemy bullets with separate animation and colour settings. Editing the enemy bits changes the behaviour of the enemy how many points it's worth, etc. While other limitations does the same for player 1 or 2 if enabled. Whereas the Commodore 64 version contains a simple sound sound effect editor with slider controls. On the Amiga and, C and Atari ST versions, the feature is replaced with IFF sounds. Now that was difficult to read and do this. Like more dragonflies. I read all that, didn't die, and I got killed by a dragonfly. Not proud of that. But okay. Going well. We're going over the sea. Now I can hear splashing. Which means fish are nearby. Now this game, I've played it before. And it does change quite quickly. We go from the sea to space. And so many games in space have asteroids. And you can't kill them. Now, these enemies shoot sweet wrappers at you. I'm assuming they're sweet wrappers, or candy, if you're in the United States. So, you're going to be killed by a sweet wrapper, or a candy wrapper, shot by an enemy that is sticking his tongue out. Yeah, I'm doing that. 
Right, but again, I think it looks really, really good. It's just a shame it's so slow. So, how many hits does this thing take? Probably about ten. Now he's littering the place. That's a naughty thing. Put it in the bin. But there's no bins in space. None around here, anyway. Can you kill it? I don't even know if he can. He must be able to, surely. Lots and lots of asteroids. So many shoot em ups have asteroids, but some of them you can shoot. Not the case here. Woo! How do you kill this thing? Sometimes it's not still long enough to find out. Come here, I want to see if I can kill you. No, it's going to end up me getting killed. I can see it happening. Right, as random as it sounds, we go back to the water again. Interesting game, this one. In the blink of an eye, we go from shooting asteroids and then shooting fish. Now that is definitely something wrong there. And then going back to bunnies again. This is really slow. And there is big points. Now these can be challenging if there's a lot on the screen. At the moment, there is. They turn to a skeleton. Now we go to penguins! My lord! How quickly it can change! In the space of 15 seconds, space, then water, then the ice age. And we can begin attacked by multiple penguins throwing snowballs. Oh my lord! Okay. Right, we have igloos. Can you blow up an igloo? Can you be killed by an igloo? Well, you can kill a penguin, though. Now, their pattern of shooting is random each time. So, yeah, it's very, very trial and error. A little bit of luck in this one, being in the right place at the right time. You're only killed by a snowball. Oh, my lord. More penguins on this level than there is in the game of James Pond 2 Code Robocop. Oh, my goodness, mate. 43,000 points. I'm still going. So are they. Blimey. Where'd you look? We've got to try and kill some of them, Jamie. I know it's a difficult thing to do, but we've got to try. That would use the firepower. Less penguins equals less firepower. Again, they take a lot of hits. Three, maybe four. Oh my lord, how long does this go on for? <laughs> That's got to be it now. No, we're still going. Back to grass again. My lord, that melted very, very quickly. Penguins can't go on the grass. Alright, now what? More bunnies. Okay. 44 fat. Look, it's so slow. It's so slow. Right, enemies are added to the game by placing them on the background and then moving them. The option to link enemies together, the front end title screen may be edited. Games can feature still screens held for the set number of seconds. The push scrolling based on the player's movement or constant vertical scrolling. Point bonuses to items are possible as well as extra lives awarded at regular scoring intervals. I'm going to give it a try one day. I'm going to be really interested to see what I can come up with. But I've got a feeling that will be quite difficult to do and very, very time consuming. But when I do it, I will do a video for it. Now, what on earth is going on now? Now, Shook is packaged with sample games to demonstrate what may be done with the kit. The Commodore 64 version comes with Slap and Tickle inspired by Slap Fight. Outlaw, a Wild West shoot 'em up in the style of an arcade game commando. And Transputer Man, set inside a computer and partially inspired by an arcade game, Robotron 20884. And Celebrity Squares, featuring graphics drawn by several C64 personalities, including video game journalists Gary Lydon and Gary Penn. The Amiga version and Atari versions, released in 1989, feature Slap and Tickle, Quasar, and an army man game called Blood and Bullets. 
Oh my lord, which features sound effect of OK Suckers. Featuring samples from Red Dwarf episodes. Do you know what? I think I've played that. I'm sure I've played that. But anyway, Jamie, that's enough to see read it, even though I didn't read it all. I got killed by a spike. I'm still going. This is crazy. Where are we now? What is going on now? This is the furthest I've got. Can you kill that thing? Yes, you can. Right, you're gonna be killed by a spike, even though I've been killed by one already. Oh, good blimey. Oh, how did I avoid that? Oh, my lord. Hang on, mate. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ease up, please. Ease up. I'm a bird frying pies in a crazy environment. Look at that. There we go. That's, that's the furthest I've got. Look at that. Wouldn't be so bad if you didn't get those spikes. Well, there we go. That's as far as I've got. Next on the list is Mega Race. Try to reach the finish line without getting shot. It's a joystick game. Sorry, no author's instructions available. Not a problem. Mega Race. Press fire to play. Okay, it's another one of these. But no longer are we flying through the sky. We are driving on the road because we are a car. Now, I like this so much better already because we've got a much better rate of fire. Now, when you see this, you're automatically going to think supercars on your media, which is a tremendous game. And so is supercars too. Tremendous. Now, in those games, you can fire missiles. And we can do that here as well. But we have unlimited supply. Now this is auto fire, so I can just keep my finger on the fire button and shoot repeatedly. Now we have police cars. Now police cars can shoot sideways. But not only that, you cannot shoot or destroy a police car. But we can pick up gas. Now gas is actually points. But as I, like I've said in some of these other ones, you can't get additional weapons and you don't know how many lives we have. Now we have trains. Now, trains will shoot at you, and you can shoot those. Now, every so often, we actually drive through the water. There is a gigantic checkered flag. Okay, second stage, which is a lot longer than the one before. No longer be driving on the road, we're driving on someone's land. Now, what makes this very, very difficult is trying to master the attack patterns. Now, red do seem the most difficult. They tend to shoot randomly. Blue fires in a straight line. Um, yellow are faster, but they shoot sideways, and a lot more often. Green, I don't think you shoot at all. So, yeah. Red is the most challenging, because they do shoot randomly. Sometimes they shoot diagonally, sometimes they drop mines, and sometimes they fire forwards. But yellow are tricky, because they do fire very, very quickly. So, those ones you really got to watch out for. That and the red. Now, the police cars, you cannot shoot. Right, now that was shooting in multiple directions. And I avoided that, I don't know how, but I did. But also, watch out for trains. Now, trains will shoot quite often, one per carriage. And so do boats. Right. Best to keep in the middle, that way you don't get shot by a train. Doing well, doing well to avoid all this chaos. Now, if I get shot by a train, I'm never going to take the train again until next time I do. Ooh. Ooh. I like green. Green is my friend. They don't shoot at you. Oh. Come on. Come on. We can do this. Uh. Crazy race. Let's get back on the road. It's safer. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, look at that. Right at the end. Never mind. A win is a win, though. Third stage is the final challenge. This is the final challenge. This is going to be the longest race of all of them. Right. So it's going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink at me, isn't it? So, not a long game, but a lot better than the one before. Now, your car is reasonably fast. Could be a little bit faster, but there we go, I can't complain. Right, this car is dropping mines and causing an issue, but then it doesn't help with the police car close by. Right, we've got to follow the arrow, but don't drive into a police car, even though they're not doing anything to stop this carnage. Right, okay. Yellows are a handful. Green is not. 
Avoid the boat. Not a fast boat. It's a deadly boat. And so the train. Now some trains have more carriages. More carriages equals more firepower. <laughs> now we do pick up the occasional gas, but again, how many lives do we have? I absolutely have no idea. I'm guessing gas probably might help towards its lives. I'm guessing here. But then that's the case of all these games. It is the guessing game. I'm gonna get killed. Can't be blamed for that. The road came to an end. Right, can we finish this one? Some of these games I have finished, not all of them. But the occasional one I can do. Now these games, the one thing I love to change is not the additional weapons, it's knowing how many lives you have. That is the only thing I'd change. The, the, the weapons is not the end of the world, but it's nice to know how many lives you have. Right, it can't be too far away, I don't think. Once again, it's narrowing down. Go. Big train. Oh, I can't be much. Ooh, we're still hanging in there. This has got to be my last life. It's, it's surely got to be now. Oh, I mean, what a changing game. They all are. Bullets being flown all over the place. Boats. Come on, where's this finishing line? Where's the guy with a checkered flag? It does tell you on the side of the road how far to go. Oh, death again. Still going. Come on, Jamie. We can do this. We can't do this. Oh, come on. This has got to be the last life now, surely. Three kilometers. Didn't get that pick up. It's fine. Oh, slow end. Train. Oh my God, we're still going. How many lives you get? I just don't know. Really don't know. 32,500 points. We have won. This is really slow. My lord. Even with all this gas, my car is really, really slow. Is this timed? Probably. Nice. Not too shabby at all. There we go. That's two completions on this video so far. Game over. You have won. Next on the list, we have Mega Ball. Destroy all the bricks to get to the next level, mouse and keyboard. Mega Ball. Graphics and music by Al Mackey. Press mouse button for one player, two for two, and shift and Q to exit. Okay, it's one of these sort of games. I haven't played many of these on my channel, but it's very similar to Arkanoid. But this is using the mouse. Now, we pick up these... Items. Now some of them are good, and some of them are not so good. In fact, there's actually one that kills you. It actually blows you up. Now the rules are fairly safe with explanatory. We've got to break this wall down. That's That one kills you. Avoid it at all costs. You turn into uh, flames, and it burns you to death. Now, it's definitely in the right place at the moment. This is board one, and for an open level, it's quite a big wall. So it's definitely in the right place at the right time. Now, I don't actually know all of these. Ah! Oh, well, I like that one. That finishes the level for you. Board two. Four, whoa! My lord. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Right, okay. I don't like invisible ones. Ah! I don't like invisible ones. Ooh. Trouble, I don't have my mouse in a particularly good place right now. 
Oh my goodness me. Right. Now I have pl Whoa! Now I have pl Way! Now I have played another one of these on this series. And that one was good, but it did have a few flaws. Okay, this is this is chaotic. Oh, I like that. I like the sound effects too. Oh, that was fast. I mean, it's music. Do you know what? There's a game which I played on one of my pickup videos and stream called Aunt Arctic Adventure, and that is very, very similar. You have to pick up a token to give yourself music. Oh, the biggest block ever, Jamie. You had there, and you missed the ball. But yes, you can pick up a token, and it gives you music. What does that one do? I don't know what all of them do, but... Oh, what was that? Okay. Plus one. Ah, extra life! They're very generous with some of these power arts, but one of them kills you. Right, can you kill a yellow brick? Oh, not one of these ones again. What's that? I like those, but why do you keep picking those up and make some progression? Board three. Oh, I don't like it, it does that. What's that? Can you get a laser in this one? Because a lot of these games you can. Oh dear. Now that was not a good thing. But it is quite good actually. That slowed the ball right down. That was lucky. Superb. Better than the last one I played. Never actually finished any game like this. Never in my life. Whoa! That was super fast! My lord! Crikey! What a score! I'll type your name! I shall indeed! Well, I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to move the mouse a little bit closer. Whoa! Because... Oh, I'm not kidding. Right, we're going to do it. We're going to have to... Shut up the ante. Now I'm going to go with a piece of wood on my lap. And a mouse. Okay. Ooh. So the whole... Whoa! The whole screen has dropped. Ooh! Right, okay. I wasn't expecting that. Ooh, that's me. But that will help to get it... Ooh. Every time it hits it, it drops. When it's lower, there's more opportunity to get it up the top. My lord, look at that! I've never seen one that big before. Never! That is gigantic. Look at it! I love this game. It's a good game. Oh, you can't take it onto the next screen. Never mind. Board 2. This is a tremendous game. This is really good. Oh, what a start that is. Oh, I like this. Now, if you escape... Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. You get that from Spaceballs. Spaceballs the movie. Look at that ball's movement. My lord, that is... Whoa, okay. Tricky. Yes. Oh! Cool, blimey, Jamie. Well, I've got, I've beaten the high score, 3,172, this is the best go, but life's are low. Woo! Blimey. One thing I love about this game is the weapons don't wear off, unless you do that, and that changes things. Ah, uh, ah, oh, I don't believe it. Next on the list, we have Mirror Wars. Try to hit your opponent, but watch out for the rebound. One player or two player? Wanna play? Mirror Wars. Now, I'm sure I've played this in the old days. Right, one player or two player? Oh, Billy No Mates, so you have to go solo on this one. Okay, this is Mirror Wars. Now, I have played this in the old days, but it was a long time ago. The rules are simple. We've got to shoot our opponents. Now, I am the red spaceship. The computer is green. And this could be a one or two player game. 
The rules are simple. We've got to shoot these mazes. Now, our bullets are exactly identical. So sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to see which ones are my bullets and which ones are theirs. Because it can actually go back and shoot yourself. And you don't want to shoot yourself. Now, every maze is different. And also, every maze is timed. It was actually 60 seconds, but I've reduced it to 30. So as you progress, the mazes get larger. So it's a case of trying to find the right maze to do the job. Now, you probably could actually win this game by not actually firing, because the computer can also shoot themselves. Now, you can either press the button quickly and shoot all bullets at once, or you can stagger it like that. But there's probably more likely chance you're going to shoot yourself. There we go, I won that one. Okay, let's look at the options. Now, combat time I've already mentioned, but we also get a laser speed, mirror size. Let's up the ante on that. Let's go for a laser speed of maximum of nine. And a mirror size, we'll up the ante on that as well. We'll go for the maximum, which is probably going to be nine as well. So there we go. Okay, so here we go again, but now we're shooting faster and the mazes are larger. Now, you can actually shoot like there's no tomorrow, but there's a really large chance that you're going to shoot yourself. Now, the computer is just shooting like there's no tomorrow, and to be honest, so am I. But when the mazes get as big as this, it can be absolute total carnage, and it can be over in an absolute flash. Now, I am red, computer is green. Player one wins. Okay, last bit of footage for this game. I've increased it once again. We're going to go for the maximum rounds, which is nine. The maximum speed, which is nine. And the maximum size of mazes, which is nine. Now, because I've extended it to nine rounds, we're going to see much larger mazes. So, it's just trial and error. Just shoot like it's no tomorrow. If you get lucky, you get lucky. If you get unlucky, you're unlucky. So... We are both just firing like there's no tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. Now, these bullets can go on for absolutely ages, and some of them are. Now, down the bottom of the screen, there is a bar. Now, that is the time bar, so if there's no winners in that round, then it'll be a timeout. At the moment, we are both surviving. I don't know how we're surviving quite so long as this, but there we go. Someone got shot there. I don't know who it was. It was probably him. That was me. Now, some rounds could be over like that. I mean, it really, really could. Like that one, and that one, and that one. I won. There we go. That is Mirror Wars. Next game on the list is Missile Command. Destroy the incoming missiles with your own missile, mouse or keyboard. Classic. Just your basic Missile Command. Now, I have played this. I played it loads in the old days, but we're going to do it for this video. Okay, this other game. This is Missile Command. This is a brilliant game. Played it loads in the old days. Now, the original Missile Command is a 1980 arcade game developed and published by Atari Inc. and licensed to Sega for the European release. It was designed by Dave Thewer, who also designed Atari Vector's graphics game Tempest from the same year. In 1981, the Atari 2600 port of Missile Command by Rob Fulop sold over 2.5 million copies. Now, this is a brilliant game. There's so many versions of this game. However, I haven't played all of them. But the rules are simple. We've got to destroy the missiles. Now, what makes this very, very difficult is your lack of bullets. All bullets are limited. Now, you've got to protect the cities. There are six cities. Now, you've got to hit the tip of the missile to destroy it. Hit it anywhere else, and it will split. But there we go. Try and get past it by shooting the least amount of bullets possible, because any outstanding bullets you have used is converted into points, and you get 100 times bonus for each successful city you save. And this is wave two. Brilliant game. Looks really, really good on the Mega. Now also you get these dots. Now these are the most difficult because they backtrack. So they try and avoid your bullets. Now you can also get combos. You're gonna hit more than one missile with one blast. Now those ones, you've got to shoot around it to try and block it in. Well, I wasn't paying attention, but I couldn't see that right-hand side because my monitor screen is over there. So one has been destroyed, but you can earn them back. I need to move that monitor screen. I couldn't see that. Right, okay. Score is down the bottom left. What a brilliant game. This was a freebie on a demo magazine. I can't remember what one it was. Right. A 10 times bonus for each successful dot. A dot, I think, contains 
a certain quantity of bullets. I can't remember how many. This is wave three. The game is played by moving a crosshair across the sky grab bound via a trackball and pressing one of the three buttons to launch a counter-strike missile from the appropriate battery. The counter missile explodes upon reaching the crosshair, leaving a fireball that resists for several seconds and destroys any enemy missile that enters it. There are three batteries, each with ten missiles. Missile batteries become useless when it, its missiles are all fired or the battery is destroyed by an enemy firepower. The missiles of the central battery fly to their targets at much greater speed. Only missiles that can be effective kill the smart bomb at the distance. Now you might notice I've had to go back to level 1 to read that each time because I can't do it on future levels because you have those really, really dangerous seeking bullets. But that is again based on the original, which of course has three buttons. Not here, this is a mouse. And it works superbly well. It's very, very responsive and very, very accurate. There we go. Superb! Way 7. I'm hanging by an absolute thread here, but this is getting really difficult now, which you expect. They do pick up a lot of speed, and they split a lot more. Now, these ones at home in, I'm starting to get the hang of it now, but there's a lot more of them. If you put one at the front and the back, it should squish it like a sandwich. The content's inside a sandwich. So, yeah. Try and sandwich those deadly bullets. This is getting close. But then if there's less cities, a lot of bullets are not going to hit anything. So that's a good thing. But also, if it hits your gun, then that also drains your bullets. We're not done yet. But this game really, really is good fun. It's really good fun. I played it loads in the old days. It looks spectacular. Great game. Now, Missile Command also featured in Terminator 2. Brilliant film. But yeah, it featured in that. There we go. Another one done. Superb. They can earn those cities back. I didn't. This is wave 8. Right, times are bad. One city remains. I'm hoping if I get past this, I might earn one back. I'm hoping so. But I'm running low on bullets. I'm still going. I am still going. One city remains. This is now wave nine. I just got one back. Oh my goodness me. These people in this city are probably having an absolute heart attack right now. But don't worry, I'm trying my best to save you. But I'm sorry to say, but I'm probably going to run out of bullets. And that's something you don't want to hear when you're trying to protect cities. I'm out of bullets. I'm out of ammunition. I don't have any more. Boom! Boom! And pow! There we go. Got nowhere to go. We've got no bullets to fire with. Yeah, just rub it in my face. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Right, that was a failure. But there we go. Game over player one. That was a really tremendous game. There we go. We reach high score status. The best nuke dudes. Boop a pow. That is Missile Command. Tremendous game. Next game on the list is Monopoly. A version of the classic board game Mouse and Keyboard. Parker Brothers Monopoly, a game for two to four players. It's going to be interesting because I live on my own. So how am I going to play this game with just one player? Yes, hello. We do have Andy here. This is Andy. Yes, Handy Andy. How are you doing, mate? You want to play? Yes, it's nice to meet you. Yes, yes. Okay, let's start. Number of human players, one and a half. Please enter each player's name. Okay, and we've got Andy. There we go. Satisfied with the names? Yes, I am. These are the names that represent the players, Morgan's Risk Games and Andy. Satisfied with the names? For the second time today, yes. Okay, it's not the greatest board. And to be honest with you, I don't need headphones because there's absolutely zero sound. It's inevitable that's going to be the case. Okay, not the greatest board, I have to admit, but Andy, it is your turn. Now, Mopoly is a game board currently published by Hasbro in the game. Players roll two six-sided dice and move around the board, buying and trading properties, and developing them with houses and hotels. 
Players rent from their opponents with the goal being to drive them into bankruptcy. Money can be gained or lost through chances or community chess cards and tax squares. Can end up in jail, which they cannot move from until they have met one of several conditions. The game has numerous house rules. And hundreds of different editions exist, as well as many spin-offs and related media. Monopoly has become part of the international popular culture, having been licensed locally in more than 103 countries and printed in more than 37 languages. Right, TV's going to turn itself off, which you can't see, only I can. Now that doesn't happen in a normal game of Monopoly. Right, Morgan Dust Games, you have landed on St. James's Place. Andy owns this property with no houses. Already? My lord, okay, I've got to pay rent. My lord, how much have I missed here? Well, again, you have landed on chance. Go back three spaces. Well, you deserve that, after what you did to me. Andy has landed a community chest. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Well, that was a bad run. Off you go to jail. Okay, it's my turn. Now, Monopoly is derived from the Landlord's Gang created by Lizzie Maggie in the United States in 1903 as a way to demonstrate that the economy which rewards wealth creation is better than one where monopolists work under few constraints and to promote the economy theories of Henry George, in particular his ideas about taxation. It was first published by Parker Brothers in 1935 until that firm was eventually absorbed into Hasbro in 1991. The game is named after the economic concept of monopoly, the domination of the market by a single entity. Right, I've been too busy reading that. I don't know what's going on, but I'm currently visiting jail. So who's winning, Andy? I have no idea. He doesn't speak anyway. He's not going to tell me. Okay, your turn, Andy. Roll the dice, mate. You have landed on B&O Railroad. Morgan Gaines owns this railroad only. Pay $25. Pay up, mate. Pay up. Now, I love Monopoly. I'm a big fan of Monopoly, but this one is absolutely terrible. No offence to Andy, but he hasn't been speaking to me at all. So, we're going to go on to the next game. Next on the list is Mosaic. Sort your numbers while stopping the computer from doing the same. Another mouse game. The object of the game is to get your line of pieces in numerical order so that each piece has a higher value to the piece that is to its left. You take it in turns with the Amiga to exchange any one of your pieces with the centre piece. You exchange a piece for... The centre piece by clicking on the piece to be discarded. The strategy is to get your own line in the right order, but not to discard pieces that will be used to your opponent. If the centre piece is of no use to you, you can click on that piece instead to exchange it for a new piece. If the new piece is of no use either, clicking on it will end your turn. Okay, this is Mosaic. It's me versus the computer. And the object of the game is to get your numbers going from left to right in the correct order. So, ideally you're going to want your highest number on the right and your lowest on the left. But you can switch them between the one in the middle. But you don't want to be helping out your opponent. However, if it's one you don't want, you can discard it. But that will end your turn. Now, 62 is in completely the wrong place. I'm just switching for that. So, at the moment, my lowest number is actually in the correct location. But 11 is not. So I'm going to put that there. But we need to get rid of that 11. You don't want to help out your opponents. Right, place that there. So 3, 12 and 22. We've got to get rid of that 18 and the 11. Place that there. Now it's never going to be an easy task against a computer. Now he rejected that one but took a 10 and switched it for a 33, which does help me out. So I'll place it there. So, who's winning? I'm not sure yet. Nine, that doesn't really help me out at all. I'm going to take a gamble. Okay, that is perfect. We'll switch that for 18. 3, 12, 22, 31, 33, 44. Bingo! 59. Yes. I've won! Fantastic! Okay, 55 is a high number. Uh, but it's not going to be my highest number. So, we'll put it there. Why not? You can have that. 37. Which is probably going to put... Ah, okay. Right. 26. Let's get rid of that one. That 2 is a bit of a nuisance. Get rid of the 2, which is going to put right at the start. 43. Place it there. 59 at the end. 46. That will go there. Very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. 22 goes there. 8. There. 
Okay, we have that. 15, I'll take that. 48 is yours if you so want it. Yep. 60, that is high. Perfect. Exactly what I'm after. Place that there. There we go! I've won another one! Fantastic! 8, 15, 23, 26, 33, 36, 43, 46, 55, and 60. I have 120 points, he has 90. What is it first to? I have no idea. I want that! I don't want that! Uh, oh, that'll do! That'll do! That'll do! That'll do! Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That was a close one! My lord, look at that! So you know you need one number. Okay, game 10 and the final game for this video, this is Motherload, a shareware version of Load Runner, joystick, mouse and keyboard. Night Owl Software presents... Motherload, a game by Joe Rumsey. Okay, this is Motherload, which is very, very similar to Load Runner, of course. Now, Load Runner is a 2D fixed screen platformer video game, first published by Broderbund in 1983. Levels in Load Runner are puzzle oriented. The player controls one character who must collect all the gold pieces in the level and then get to the end while being chased by a number of enemies. It is the one of the first games to include a level editor. Now, I haven't played many Load Runner games. There's lots of spin offs, there's lots of different versions, but this one's not bad. I have to admit, it's not bad. However, no in game music, which is such a shame. Now, your character is quite a fast runner, but he's not a jumper. You cannot jump at all. But what you can do is you can dig, and that is how we kill enemies. Now, these enemies, when they fall into your hole that you've dug, they'll fall into it, and then you can actually run over their heads. But, over the course of time, that hole will slowly fill itself. And if there is an enemy in there, he has a limited time to get out of there. Otherwise, he'll be buried alive, and that is a kill. But you can actually kill yourself if you are underground, you can't get out, and it refills itself. So you can actually bury yourself alive. But first thing you must do, don't kill yourself. Collect all the collectibles and then find the exit. When you find the exit, a ladder will appear which will go up screen to the next level. Now I'm assuming because it says 001, I'm guessing there's quite a lot of uh, levels to this game. Now we've got to try and deal with both of these people. Trouble is, they're sticking together. So, this could be quite tricky. So we need to keep them apart. So dig, dig, and dig. We can bury them alive, which sounds unbelievably mean, doesn't it? But if they climb out there quickly, they don't get buried alive. But those two got killed, and then you go back to the top of the screen. So they have been revived. Okay, there is the final piece of the puzzle. There is some ladders, lots of ladders. Right, now we need to get out of here and avoid these guys. They'll hug you down, they'll chase you down. But you can also climb along these railings. But it's a shame your character can't jump. But there we go, we're there. Okay, level two. Now after the original game, a number of remakes, spin-offs and sequels were published in the Load Runner series for different computers and consoles. And for different developers and publishers. Tonsai Games currently holds the copyright and trademark rights. Now this one is absolutely baffling my brain. I just don't know how to get past it. The problem I have here is at the top left and top right of the screen. Because, as you can see, there's a chest in both sections and they're completely sealed shut. And I don't know how you get past it. I don't know how you get access to it. Unless you can dig like you can in PP Hammer, I don't know how they do it. So, it's an absolute mystery. So, I've had a few attempts, and I can't get past it. So, let's give it a whirl. We'll give it another go. But it doesn't help the fact we've been chased by lots of these people. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this game has no in-game music, which is such a shame, because it desperately needs it. So, let's try digging like we do in PP Hammer. Now, you dig one square, or, or block, should we say, to the left or right of you. Now, we can do it like that. Amazingly, I'm not getting killed, but... Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay. 
That was probably the easy one. That one on the other side looks difficult. A lot more difficult. But the problem is... Yeah, sometimes he'll dig and sometimes he won't. Um... Right. So... Yeah. Take this one step at a time. Let's kill this guy first. Because he's not going to be able to dig out with that, because that's going to close up too quickly for him. Right. So... It's not working brilliantly, because quite clearly I'm facing right, but he dug left. So, yeah. Um... Sometimes he'll dig, and sometimes he won't. And now I'm buried alive. Right. Dig. 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 See, now he's not digging. Dig. Dig. No, you see, I'm... I'm... Oh! Hold on. Hold on. Right, hold on. I might have got this. Dig. D uh, dig. Right. Dig. 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 Down here. Dig. 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 You won't dig. Dig, man! Dig, dig, dig! You gotta dig! Why are you not digging? Dig, dig, dig! Dig. 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 I'm digging more than Mudvayne does. If you don't know who Mudvayne is, it was one of their singles called Dig. 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 I'm not gonna give up on this. I'm not giving up. Right, I'm gonna get that if it's the last thing I do. Dig, dig. D dig. No, I didn't tell you to dig there. Why would you... His digging is atrocious. He will not dig. Were you telling him to dig? Dig. 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 No. Dig. Now he won't dig. Now he will not dig. Dig, dig. Why won't you dig? Dig. Okay, I am determined to get past this. This is extremely difficult, but we're going to dig like PP Hammer does. So, dig. But we've got to be so quick. Otherwise, this guy is going to get buried alive. And it's happened quite a lot today. So, not a good day for him. Right. Quickly, quickly. Now, that guy is following. Let him follow. He'll get rooted to the spot and maybe die. But he'll come back to life. He always does. Right, we have it. Fantastic! Now that was tough. All we've got to do now is get out of here. Avoid the guy. Avoid getting buried alive. Down we go. Fantastic! That was so difficult. Right. All we've got to do now is pick up all the other ones. And collect the other really difficult one at the top left. Avoid the people. Don't fall through the floor. And we get out of here. Because one of these platforms you do fall through the floor. But then so did the enemy. Right. Superb. He's going to fall through, but so will I. But I'm going left, they are going right. Now let's make it a tough ride for them, shall we? They have delays. I need delays. There we go. Right. Dig. 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 Quickly, quickly. This is only level 2. I found out there's actually 999 levels in this game. Not many at all, is there? Right! We are out of there! Thank the Lord! There we go! Blimey! That was so incredibly difficult. We're out of there! Okay, level 3. The final level of this game and the final piece of footage for this video. Right, we have more difficult treasure. Uh, one at the bottom is by far the most difficult. Once you start digging, you have to keep going, otherwise you're going to get trapped. 
And this guy has been trapped enough times in one day. Now it's quite difficult to get off that ladder. Right, dig. 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 And quickly go and get it. There we go. Superb. That was tough. Right, all we've got to do now is pick up the remainder of the treasure and we are done here. The problem is, when an enemy is killed, they are respawned almost immediately. But they do start at the top of the screen. Let them do their thing. We have it! We have it! And two ladders have appeared! I like it a lot. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We go out of there! There we go! Look at this one. Oh my lord. That looks tricky, which is why I'm not going to attempt it. Okay, that is Motherload. Okay, everyone, now that's what I call game. Episode 5 is done. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And this is Jamie for more of this game. Please like, please comment, please share. Please subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, and Instagram, or from Twitch. Just type in Morgan's Games, you'll find it fairly easily. And please remember to click on the bell icon. That will notify you of videos at low fans. It will be these sort of videos. I do retro long plays out cheats. I'm going to be making a live stream and quite a night with you big time red cup. So I'll have my way. Till next time, be easy. Ciao bye. See ya. Home. Using the various forms of instruction offered to you. Move around the air by clicking the mouse. Jamie, moving the mouse. Okay, everyone, that's the end of my video. That is episode 5 of the That's What I Call Games done. And this is a. Oh, poo! Didn't want to do that. Just type in Morgan's Games, you find it fairly easy. And please remember. Do you know what? Over the last few weeks, that is the bit I'm struggling to say. Please remember to click on the bell icon. But the trouble is, I say it very quickly, and I said it perfectly that time. But no longer are we flying through the sky. We are now driving a car. And there was my cat. Now, I like this one so much better. Just type in Morgan's Games. You'll find it fairly easy. And please remember to click on the bell icon. That will notify you of those. Oh, poo! Just type in Morgan's Games. Jamie, you've got to slow your outro down. Because it's going to take a lifetime. But let's see how we do today. Now, there's icons you can pick up. However, some of them are good and some of them are bad. That one actually killed. Oh.